part one of the Scarlet and Violet DLC packs will be dropping in little under two weeks. Now, it might be a little while since you've played these games, or you might still have a bunch of unfinished things you can do in Scarlet and Violet. But in today's video, we are going to cover over 20 things to do in Scarlet and Violet to get yourself ready for the Teal Mask when it drops on the 13th of September. A lot of the topics that we're going to cover in today's video, I've actually already done videos on. So where appropriate and where I can link guides to these specific things, I will do in the description down below. So you can check out the links and make sure that you can check out those full extended guides for more details on the specifics that we're going to cover in today's video. So presuming that you have finished the game and you've ran through the story and you're into that post game of Scarlet and Violet, the first thing that you can do and you should want to do is rebattle all of the eight gym leaders in the game all of the gym leaders will have higher level pokemon and variations on the teams that you faced before so it's a good way to kind of test your trainer skills and also get some more matches against these iconic trainers this leads into number two which is unlocking the ace academy a tournament you can't rebattle the elite four but you can like we've just mentioned rebattle all the gym leaders once you've done this if you go back to the academy and speak to namona she will inform you about the ace academy tournament where you can go in and battle gym leaders elite four members and other trainers from around the region and by doing this we become the ace academy tournament champion this is a really great way once you've unlocked it to go back in and use it over and over again to farm money we've done a couple of guides on the channel with some great builds for pokemon that can go into this especially if you have a turbo controller you're going to be able to just set that away and let this tournament run through over and over and over again and collect as much money as you need. This is going to be probably quite important for going into the teal mask because there are going to be new items that we'll be able to buy. And having a lot of money going into this first part of the DLC will make things a lot easier for you. And once you've beat the Ace Academy tournament, it will give you access to unlocking the next stage in the post game, which is six star terror aids. Up until this point in the post game, you'll have access to five star terror aids, but there is an even stronger terror raid available. And after you've beat the Ace Academy tournament, you'll get a call from Jack and he will inform you that strong terror raids have been appearing around the Paldea region. Region. Now go and take on around 10 five star terror raids. After you've beaten 10, you will get a call again from Jack informing you that a new anomaly has appeared and it will be those six star terror raids, which will now be unlocked in your game. And you'll be able to go and collect even more high cost items as well as Herba Mystica drops to name one of the rarer items that you can get from the stronger terror raid dens in turn as well unlocking six star terror raids will give you access to seven star terror raid events when they drop in game which at the moment we have that seven star mewtwo terror raid event that you can access and take part in for those higher cost items for a limited period only Another thing to do before we go into the DLCs is make sure that you collect all of the 32 legendary stakes, which gives you access to the new four ruin legendary Pokemon that you've got access to in these games. Legendary stakes are divided up around the Paldea region and they will be hidden in obscure places, but they're not too difficult to find. We have covered a full guide on where all the locations of these legendary stakes are. So you can go out around Paldea and get these four new legendary ruin Pokemon. When you come towards the end of the game, you will fight Coriadon or Moriadon in Area Zero. But did you know that you can go back into Area Zero and encounter this box legendary Pokemon and capture it again? So you're going to have your ride on legendary Pokemon, which you'll ride around the region on. But you can also catch this one, which will already be in its battle form and you'll be able to catch it and add it to your party. Make sure when you're traveling around Paldea and going to various Pokemon centers that you speak to the Pokemon League reps at the Pokemon centers by defeating certain amount of trainers in specific areas. They will give you TM rewards and other special item rewards. This includes things like the Amulet coin. It can be very useful if you're using it for farming money with the Ace Academy tournament. But on top of that, you can collect all of the TMs and lock those so you've got access to them in the game for when you're training your Pokemon later. 
Also, in the post game, you're now going to have access to go into Area Zero, where you'll have access to all of the Paradox Pokemon that are version exclusive to your game. Make sure that you have caught all of the Paradox Pokemon available to you. There will be seven exclusive to each Scarlet and to Violet, so 14 in total. And if you've got a friend with the alternative version to what you have, you can set up a Union Circle and go into their game to capture the version exclusive Paradox Pokemon so you can have the full set of 14 Paradox Pokemon that are available currently in the games. The only two that aren't currently available to catch which were event exclusives are Walking Wake and Iron Leaves. Hopefully these two Pokemon will come around again in another event or maybe even be catchable in the DLCs. But at the moment, these are the current crop of Paradox Pokemon we have available to catch. Make sure you do get them before we go into the DLCs and it just means that you don't have to do it later on. Of course, with all this catching of Pokemon, one of the main things that you can do and make sure that you have done before you go into the Teal Mask is to complete your Pokedex. 400 Pokemon in the Paldea Pokedex. And by doing so, you will get rewards like special Apricorn Balls, Beast Balls. And of course, once you have complete your Pokedex, you can go and visit Jack in the Academy and he will award you the Diploma for completing your Pokedex as well as the Shiny Charm, which will drastically increase your chances of encountering shiny Pokemon in and around the Paldea region. And just to mention as well that you can get some exclusive in-game trade Pokemon. There is a Jotonian Wooper that you can get in Kaskarafa City by trading a Paldean Wooper. You can also get yourself a Gengar by trading a Pinchurchin for a Haunter in Lavincia. And you can get yourself a Galarian Meowth in your respected academy in your game by speaking to Salvatore, the language teacher, who once you've done a set amount of tasks with them, will give you a Galarian Meowth as a reward. So a really nice way to get yourself some of these non paldean exclusive variations and although in scarlet and violet we don't have many options for customizing our clothing you do have a few options in and around mesa goza west where you can visit some of the clothing shops and buy yourself up to 50 different caps or hats that are available there is gloves shoes and there is a variation of glasses as well that you can buy yourself to slightly customize your character uh, in their school uniform or to some extent. Hopefully this will be a feature that will be unlocked in the DLC and we'll get a lot more variations with clothing going forward in these games. While you're at these customizations, you can also pay the hairdressers a visit. These hairdressers are available in a number of places. One of them is in Mesagoza West though, and you can go in here and have your hair color changed. Customize it, the cut, the color, everything like that to make your character a little bit more customizable uh, with the limitations that we do currently have in these games. Going back to speaking to the teachers, make sure that you do go back to the academy and complete all of the lessons available to you within the academy. Completing these lessons will lead on to separate story modes with certain teachers and certain rewards can be gained from doing these quests like Terra Shards, two specific Pokemon like that Galarian Meowth that we've already mentioned. Now once you have finished the games as well, make sure that you do visit one of the sandwich shops and speak to this NPC character here who will give you all of the 151 sandwich recipes that are available in the game currently. With all of these different recipes, you're going to have a variety of different options for setting up different powers to boost egg hatching, egg being produced, to shiny hunting, and an array of other features that do help you in and around the game. Make sure that you do stock up on all of your sandwich ingredients as well. Two great places that you can go to get every single ingredient available in the games currently is Mesa Goza West. You can visit these three store here, which will give you an array of different ingredients, as well as sandwich picks, which are really important for actually making the sandwich or completing it, at least in the end. The other place you can visit is Porto Marinada, the auction house. There is some deli counters there, which do have some items that are a little bit rarer and harder to get for your sandwich ingredients. So you can top up all of your ingredients here, make sure that when you're out and about around the Paldea region, you don't have any trouble setting up specific sandwiches to boost whatever powers you want. In your playthrough, you encountered some of the strongest Titan Pokemon when beating the Paldea region. Now you can go back, if you didn't know, and catch these Titan Pokemon. They will all be there in their static forms where you originally battled them in your playthrough. 
but this time when you go back to them and you capture them they will all have the titan mark so a very special mark to show that these pokemon are the titan pokemon as well as this on top of it if you check their ivs they will have 30 ivs in every single stat making them pretty powerful pokemon that you can go in and use them in competitive or even raid builds if you want to use them for that and like we've already mentioned you can battle the gym leaders once after completing the game but you can go back and re-battle the team star bosses once you revisit every single team star base you can go up and re-battle the team star bosses they will have a variation of different pokemon from the first time you played them as well as stronger pokemon to test your trainer skills so it's just a nice little aspect to go back and see what variations they have while being able to battle them another thing probably a good idea to do before the teal mask drops is to farm terror raids this is going to give you access to getting a lot of level up candies and other high cost items but on top of that you'll be able to start farming for herba mystica Herba Mystica, one of those very rare special items that is only accessible through beating five and six star terror raids. Now, you need Herba Mystica to set up a specific sandwich, which gives you sparkling power, which increases the chances of shiny Pokemon appearing. So if you're planning on doing shiny hunting when the teal mask drops, Herba Mystica is something that you're going to need to help you in this quest. We've done a full video on farming Herba Mystica in the games and there are specific Pokemon that you really want to hunt down in those six star terror raids to give you better chances of more drops of Herba Mystica to make it easier for farming so do check that out it will be linked in the description below. Another thing to talk about is leveling up your Pokemon make sure that you have a strong team of Pokemon going into the teal mask as it stands right now we don't know how level capping is going to work when we go into the teal mask if they are going to level scale as you go into the games or if they're going to have everything kind of set to a certain level. Either way, it's always a good idea to have a strong party of Pokemon. So make sure that you do have your Pokemon leveled up to 100 at least or a plan team that you take and into the teal mask set to level 100 in case there is level scaling when we go into the teal mask. Leveling up your Pokemon is pretty easy in Scarlet and Violet. If you have been farming Terror Raids, you will have a bunch of level up candies that you can use to quickly level up your Pokemon or alternatively you can use the lucky egg item and use one of the best methods that we've got currently available in the games by battling a bunch of Chansey that are available in this specific area of the game. You can do this by setting up an encounter power sandwich that will increase the likelihood of Chansey spawning in an area and then just go into the battle and battle them and it will give you a huge amount of experience points making it very easy for you to level up your Pokemon and getting them ready for that teal mask when it does drop in two weeks time. And now we've talked about you've got the shiny charm and you've been farming Herba Mystica. It's probably a good idea to go out and shiny hunt for some of your new Paldea favorite Pokemon Pokemon that are available in these base games. One of the Pokemon that I would like to suggest to go for if you haven't already is Applin because we have had that new evolution revealed already in Diplin. It is going to be a Pokemon that a lot of you probably want to get and get in its shiny form if you already go and plan ahead and get Applin in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as a shiny Pokemon then you're going to have the ability to evolve it into Diplin pretty easily when the Teal Mask does drop. But of course, outside of Applin, there are a bunch of really great shiny Pokemon that you can go after in Paldea. The shiny hunting methods in this game do make it a lot easier than previous generations. So going out and catching your favorite new Paldea Pokemon in their shiny form shouldn't be too hard work and gives you something to do to fill the time in before these DLCs drop. With the DLCs dropping as well, we're going to have access to a variety of not only new Pokemon that we're going to have access to, but some older Pokemon that are coming back in the DLCs. Now, to catch these Pokemon, you might want to get them in special Pokeballs. So if you are wanting to use the Apricorn Balls, for instance, you can head to the auction house in Porto Marinada and then cycle through the auctions to try and get yourself some of these rarer Pokeballs. One caveat to this is they do cost a lot of money in the auctions and you're looking at like 200,000 plus for one of these special Pokeballs. But if you've got a lot of money spare ready to go into the auction house, it is a good thing to do to get some of these special Pokeballs ready to catch some of these new exclusive Pokemon that are going to be available once the Teal Masters drop. And while you're at the auction house, another thing to consider is trading in some of the Pokemon 
that you've got in home from previous generations to unlock some of those special form changing items that are now available in the game. You can get things like the Gyrus Orb, you can get the Water Scroll, the Dark Scroll for the Urshifu forms and a variety of other items that are now available in the auction house by speaking to this specific NPC character here who will give you all of the items required to transform these special Pokemon into their alternative forms. And with that, that is about everything you can do in Scarlet and Violet before the DLCs drop. Make sure that you do have a lot of money going into this DLC. Make sure you have special Pokeballs if you're planning to catch these Pokemon that are now going to be available for the first time in the Teal Mask outside of Scarlet and Violet. It's a good thing to have. And obviously, Herba Mystica. That's the one thing that I'm planning on getting a lot of going into this Teal Mask because I feel like I want to be shiny hunting a lot of the new Pokemon that are going to be available to us for the first time in Scarlet and Violet. So it's going to be really exciting getting these items prepared going into the Teal Mask. Hopefully this helps fill the gap and complete some of the tasks that you have available in Scarlet and Violet if you're waiting for the DLCs or if you haven't done them already. But a bit of a recap video for everything that you can do in Scarlet and Violet before that DLC does drop. I'm very excited for the Teal Mask dropping on the 13th of September. Let me know what you're looking forward to most about the Teal Mask, Pokemon, new features, etc. Anything that we've seen in those teaser trailers, I would love to hear what you're thinking and how hyped you are for these games dropping very soon. If you've enjoyed today's video, please drop a like. It does really help the channel out and make sure you do hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. This includes those DLCs when they do drop the Teal Mask and the Indigo Disc, which we will be covering in full when these games do eventually go live. Thank you so much for tuning in though, friends. Have a great rest of your day. I will see you all in another video very soon. Until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.